everybody, this is Franco, and I'm going to repair my nut. I'm going to raise that nut slot using shavings from a Delrin guitar pick and super glue. So, what happened here? Um, this guitar came from the factory. The nut was actually way too high, so I was thinking, hey, I'm a smart guy, right? I can fix this. So I bought myself the Music Nomad nut file kit and I came over here and I, you know, used my shim, measured everything up, figured out what I wanted to do. I grabbed the 046 file, which is what you would use for the low E. I did the low E string and then I, I forgot to put the 46 down. What I should have done was use the 36 for the A. I mistakenly used the 46 for the A. So now my slot is the right height, but it's too wide. I don't like that. So I'm going to fill it in and recut it. And I'm going to use a black Tortex guitar pick as the filler material. So uh, apparently Delrin, that's, that's what these picks are made out of. Tortex is made out of Delrin. Apparently Delrin is a material that some guitar nuts are made out of anyway, so it seemed like a good filler. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to take this pick, I'm going to file it, and make some shavings. And then I'm going to pack those shavings down into that slot. I'm going to wick some super glue into it, I'll let it dry. And then I'm going to recut it with the proper size file. Okay, have some masking tape on the guitar to protect it from the super glue. And right here I have a pile of guitar pick shavings on my file. So that is, let's see how close I can zoom in. That will be the material that I use to fill in this slot. Okay, I scraped the uh, pile of uh, Delrin. You can really zoom in with this phone. That's pretty cool. So you can get an idea of what I'm dealing with here. All right, nice little pile of Delrin chips, so we're going to pack them down into the nut. Okay, let me try to zoom in on this a little bit. There it is. So you can see what we have here. We have, uh, you know, everything looks really weird when you zoom in on it, but I have those filings packed into that nut. And I try to like almost sort of clean up the edges a little bit. What's gonna happen, the filings work like a wick. So the super glue kind of wicks its way down in between all the filings. And um, that's exactly what you want, right? You know, when you're done, you kind of have a combination of filings and super glue. And something I forgot to mention, before I packed it in there, I cleaned, I cleaned everything with isopropyl alcohol just to make sure their, you know, that their surface was prepped as, as good as it possibly could be. But I also used... I folded this sheet of paper and used that to kind of guide the um, filings into the nut. But, you know, maybe you want to lay off on the caffeine the day that you do this so you don't, you know, not too jittery. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill that in with super glue. All right. So we dropped a little bit of super glue on there. You don't need very much. You know, remember, it's going to wick down in with all the, the filings. They soak it up like a sponge. That's really what's happening here. The, the super glue is going to follow the, the pile of chips, essentially, right? But you need to give it some time. If you have 
any kind of chemicals or whatever to help it accelerate, I guess you could use that. But I'm just going to give it some time, maybe breathe on it a little bit. I, I believe moisture is an accelerator for super glue. I think that's why it sticks to your skin so quickly. Um, so yeah, we're just going to let that dry. It's been about 15 minutes, and I'm pretty sure my super glue is mostly dry. My little my little test drop here on the piece of paper is dry. So I'm pretty confident that the uh, super glue in the nut slot is dry. And I've poked at it a little bit, and it uh, seems like it's pretty hard. But before I go and cut the slot, I'm just I'm going to sand the top of this a little bit just to get all that that nasty blob of super glue off of there and uh, clean that up a little bit before I get into it. I want something that's relatively flat so I'm just going to wrap some emery cloth around the handle portion of my uh, feeler gauge set and that's what I'm going to use to clean up the top of the nut. Okay, all that nasty stuff is cleaned off of the top of the nut and uh, wiped, rubbed it, uh, tech, you know, cleaned it up with the, just, this is just like emery cloth. Literally, uh, you know where I got this from? This is out of, I have a toolbox for when I do plumbing work. This is just some of the emery cloth I keep in my toolbox for cleaning up copper pipe. So there's nothing fancy here. I am not a professional luthier, but I will make this work. So now it is time to um, try to recut that, that slot. So the idea here is to uh, kind of match the angle of the strings. So while you're cutting, right, you want to angle, angle your file to, to match the angle of the strings. I, uh, you know, this is a, what is this, a three by three type of headstock, right? So. I had to loosen up the uh, D string so it doesn't interfere when I'm moving the file. And, you know, just be careful, right? Don't, you can always cut more away, but as you can see from this video, it's a lot of work to add more material back. So try not to uh, do what I did and cut too much away in the first place. So just be careful, take your time, and cut your slot uh, in, in stages. Keep cutting, measuring, Cutting, measuring again. Don't try to go too far at one time. So I've only taken, you know, a couple of passes, maybe, like maybe, I don't know, t 10 or 15 passes back and forth, but you can see it's already starting to uh, take shape. And um, so it looks like that fill material is, is working pretty good so far. So like I said, just be careful. Don't cut too much at one time. Just keep cutting, uh, checking, and then recutting. Okay, I know the nut slot is not anywhere deep enough yet, but I just want to show you, you know, what I'm doing to check it. So I have the string, you know, it's, it's sitting where its slot would be, and you may not be able to tell from the video, but the, uh, you know, the A string is way high. But all I'm going to do is with my, my like I said, 20 thou on the... EAD, that's the shim you want for the EAD. I'm just going to, uh, carefully, it's hard for me to do this with one hand, but I'm, I'm going to put the shim under the string, and then I'm just going to tap on the string to see how much gap there is between the uh, bottom of the string and the top of the shim. And, you know, right now there's quite a bit. I, I knew that. Um, but that's, that's the process. You're going to file a little bit, put the string back in, I like to tune it back up. I don't know if that really makes a difference, but it makes me feel better. And then you just check. So here is a shot just in process. And like I said, everything looks worse when you zoom in on it. But uh, I still have quite a ways to go, but I, I'm a little paranoid, so I don't really take more than 10 passes, maybe 15 passes per shot. But you can see it's starting to uh, starting to look like a nut. All right, there we go. We are finished. 
And uh, I'll probably get a little razor knife and just clean up some of that fuzz that uh, is kind of sticking out. But that nut, that nut is repaired. And, you know, here again, I'm zoomed in on this thing under pretty good magnification. But now it, the slot is a little closer to the size of the string. And this thing will play great, I'm sure. So, there you go. You can read raise your your nut slots and uh, cut them to size with the Music Nomad diamond files.